in this summer rhythm that we've been having where we change up the pace a little bit and we go deeper and wider um, as a community and we hear from one another and we're edified by one another as well. So let's go ahead and take a moment and we're going to open up the scriptures today um, to Psalm chapter 7 verses 1 to 5. And just uh, two very brief things. Um, please, uh, if you haven't already signed up to volunteer for the barbecue this coming Saturday, please do that. Um, Al will have the sign-up sheet immediately after service. And also, uh, Joyce Jones, Sister Joyce has a need for some volunteers. And I'm thinking maybe some of, the, uh, some of our uh, middle and high school um, uh, kids can be able to help with that. Um, to just cut out some some uh, some crafts and some hearts. So please meet uh, Joyce, uh, Miss Joyce, immediately after service to help her out with that, or anyone else that would be available um, as well. But um, there's a need for that immediately after service today, as we prepare for the outreach this coming um, uh, Saturday. And also, as you can see, there's already some decorations for VBS that's going to be occurring here in the church throughout this week. So if, if that is something you or a child in elementary age that you know would like to uh, take part in or volunteer in, please let Shailene know and um, or myself and, and we will be able to connect you with that and register you for that throughout this week. But now let's go ahead and open up our hearts and open up our minds as we enter into God's word. And today we're going to be in Psalms chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. You can follow along in your Bibles or on the projector screen or for those online through the slides as well. Psalm 7, uh, verses 1 to 5. Let's hear now from God's precious word. Psalm 7, beginning at verse 1. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give me the command to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. Verse 5, for you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. Let's pray. God, we thank you that our confidence is not in our circumstances or situations, but our confidence is in you, Lord, the one who has been with us since our youth, since our childhood. Some of us here are our youth, are young, and Lord, may they know that you are with them. You are with, Lord, those that are young. You are with those who are older. Whatever stage in life we're in, God, you are constant and present. Thank you, Lord, that we can find our peace, our joy, our confidence in you, Lord. Be our strength today. Be our hope. You are with us, Lord. You are here with us. You are ahead of us in this journey. Today, Lord, would you be our light, guide us in whatever wilderness, in whatever season of challenge that we may be going through right now. Take us to where you would have us be, Lord. Take us to a place that goes beyond our fear, Beyond, beyond our anxiety, but beyond our insecurities, Lord. Take us to a place where you use all of that to make us new and to make something beautiful, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take us to you. Take us to your presence. Lord, you are our joy and our strength. And today, Lord, we pray that you would be our refuge. Be our hiding place today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So as I mentioned, today we're going to take an opportunity to continue in our summer series, and our summer rhythm, 
where we change up the pace a bit. Things are a little bit different during the summer, of course, because so many people are out on vacation, in and out. Um, like I mentioned before, during the summers, our congregation is all over the, the place. We literally have people in different parts of the world, different states right now, and we're grateful that we get to be the presence of Jesus wherever he calls us. But because of that, we change up the rhythm a bit during the summer where in, instead of just uh, we go, being in the regular rhythm that we're in during the fall and spring, where uh, we just simply listen and receive and respond to the Word of God, we take time in the summer to actually engage the Word of God together as a community, as a family of God. We actually take an opportunity to sharpen one another as a community, to learn from one another, as it says in that proverb, as iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens another. One man sharp sharpens another. One woman sharpens another. Uh, one brother or sister in Christ sharpens another brother or sister in Christ. So that's what we do throughout the summer. And this month, we've actually been in this series that we've been calling Lift Every Voice where it's been an opportunity to hear the different voices from our congregation, to hear about the hope that we have in Christ together. And um, today, we're going to have the opportunity to do that a bit more and to hear a few other voices from our congregation. And we'll be doing that for the next few weeks also, so I'm grateful for that. Last week, we had an opportunity to hear from Eris and to hear from Shailene, and, um, and we were just so thrilled, and from our brother James, who we gave a gospel goodbye to down to Southern California, um, and uh, bless him in this next season. And today, we're going to have an opportunity to hear a, a few other voices, and then we'll open up the, the, the floor for anyone. Um, and today is going to be what... Uh, if some of you had done this before, either back in the days, it's what can be called an old school testimony service and prayer service. And that's what we're going to be doing today together as a family of God. So we are beyond excited to have the opportunity to do that. And we're going to be hearing testimonies, stories of our hope in Jesus Christ, stories of hope from our community, where each person will be sharing what their hope in Jesus Christ has looked like, especially in this past season and perhaps difficult year for many. And then they'll be able to share what their hope for our community is in the year to come and in this season to come. So are we ready to hear some testimonies, to hear about the goodness of God? Yes, amen. So first, we're going to start off with welcoming our dear sister in the Lord that we value, Christine Mativo. Let's go ahead and welcome her this morning. <laughs> we'll get her a little stool here. So, Christine, we are just so grateful for you. All right, do you need anything else? Or, okay. Although, yeah, of course. That may help, right? <laughs> Actually, just project, use your preaching voice. and yeah. <laughs> um, we're just so grateful for you and just for um, j just who, who you are and who you bring to this community. Just your sincerity, your love for others, and your heart to serve is just such a blessing. And um, we just want to hear from you um, this morning. If you could just share with us about this season. And we've had an opportunity to, to, to navigate and pray through a number of things. Um, but if you can share with the community how this season and your journey with God has looked like. Um, and especially even in this journey, how have you held on to your hope in Jesus Christ in this season? How have you held on? to God's promises. Okay, so <clears throat> when you first asked me to be one of the speakers, I knew immediately I wanted to share Psalms um, 23. Psalm 23. One, two, well, all of it. I don't know if it's projected up there. There it is, yeah. And mm -hmm. I was just 
looking to relate an activity in my life because as Eris shared mm. last week, life is not smooth, it's full of um, hills or, or mountains that you have to climb, but it's also full of valleys that you have to crawl out of. So I was mm. thinking, what do I share? So um, then on Wednesday, uh, I received some news from the family that we had suffered um, a, a heartbreaking loss, that something that we had put a lot of hope in and planned a lot of things around was not going to happen anymore. And at first, I was just in shock because I was comforting this family member who delivered the news. This was like around lunchtime, and I was just preparing to go to lunch. I was at work. And um, I went to lunch, and I worked the rest of the day. And as I was driving home, it just, it just started hitting me hard how, what this loss meant, because there were milestones planned, things planned around this, and so much hope. And I just, I had 45 minutes to drive home for, in my car from Fresno to Lamar, and I was just, I just started crying, and, breaking down. And um, when I got home, I went into the house. I live alone. So again, I was there again with my thoughts. And I felt myself just sort of spiraling and feeling so much despair. And I remember thinking, um, what do I do? I was also really anxious. I felt really anxious and desperate and sad. And, and I thought, what do I do? Uh, uh, I can't call a friend because I'm the kind of person who has to deal with something before I can actually call somebody to mm. help me deal with it. So I thought, what do I do? And then I thought, oh, let me grab my Bible and see if I can find something that would help me. So I grabbed my Bible and I read through the verse. And I read it out loud. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I read it out loud, just like I read it now. And as I'm reading, it just sounded like noise, like so much noise in my head, disturbing my thinking about the loss that I had just suffered. So I thought, okay, let me read it just like in a whisper. So I mm. did that again, and still nothing. So I thought, okay, let me just read it in my head without any noise, any voice. I did that again, nothing. So I started flipping through Psalms because I knew David would have something that I would grab onto that would really make me feel comfortable. And there was nothing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I felt like this is at the point that if I was a drinking woman, I would pour myself something really strong because <laughs> I felt so anxious and I needed something to calm myself. So I just put it down for a minute and then I thought, okay, what am I going to do now? And then I thought, okay, let me just open it and just read it really slow and see if I can connect with something. So I started reading and the first thing was the Lord is my shepherd. And then I thought, what is a shepherd? What does a shepherd do? And I started thinking, okay, a shepherd protects. Yes. A shepherd provides. Mm -hmm. A shepherd leads. A shepherd guides. A shepherd soothes. And then I started connecting with something. If I am praying to God, which I had been praying in the car, and I wasn't feeling a connection, I needed to focus on my shepherd is the Lord, God Almighty, who does all these things for me. Then I read the next verse, 
and verse 3 I connected with that he restores my soul, hmm. which is what I was feeling like I needed to. And I just started reading each verse and meditating and grabbing onto one thing. On verse, verse 4, I read that he is with me. On verse 5, I read, my cup overflows. And I thought, okay, how does my cup overflow? And then I remember the person who had called me told me, okay, we are acknowledging the loss, but we're also now focusing on how blessed we are with other things. And I noticed that as how my cup was overflowing in so mm -hmm. many other ways in my life. Mm -hmm. And I started now thanking God for all these things that are so positive in my life. And uh, I started feeling a connection with, with God, which I was not feeling when I was just reading through. Then I got to, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I started reflecting back through my life about how his goodness has been through the valleys, in the the hills that I have to climb. Um, and I started realizing that he has always been with me and that he has always been the one to soothe me in, when I was feeling this angst and he is the only one who can soothe me in that way. So um, what I learned from this is that um, you can, you can have a verse, because I have used this. I was using this because this is something, this is a scripture that I've used the last 15 years, maybe plus. But I really could not remember how I did it in that moment because I was so panicked and I was feeling so much pain. And then uh, it occurred to me that you, you really have to meditate on it. You mm -hmm. can't just read it through. It's not a pill that you take and, and you wow. feel better right away. You have to meditate. You have to... Uh, look at his goodness. You have to look at your life and grab onto those things where you have overcome because of because of, of God's goodness. The other thing that I learned is this, I'll call it a project that I was praying for and that we had so much hope in. I had really invested a lot of time praying and I would always pray uh, God's will. At the end, I will say to God, this is my wish. This is what we want as a family. But your will be done. What I was reminded is that when you pray that and his will, his will is done, sometimes you also have to pray for him to help you to accept his will. Mm. Because it's really not always that easy to accept it. Mm. Amen. But when you look throughout your life, as I did, and you realize all the things that you've gone through in life and how he's brought you through, you realize that his will has always been best. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow, so those words came to life when you meditated, when you went beyond just reading the letters, reading, the, but actually took time to enter into God's presence. And to see God and to reflect on your own life as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. and on the goodness, on how faithful he's been and how he's always been there. Wow, right. amen, amen. And then covering it with the greatest prayer of all time, the prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane, where he prays his desires, his hopes to his Father, but covers it all with, and Father, may your will, not my will, be done. Exactly. Wow. And as his faithful daughter, we hear that from you as well. Thank you so much for that, Christine. You've shared with us a little bit of your journey in this past year of your story. Is there a word of encouragement or a word of blessing or encouragement that you would give to us as your church family in this new season, new year that we're moving together in? I think what I would say is also from just this scripture that to realize that um, uh, our Lord who is mighty, who owns everything and who has all the power is our shepherd Amen. and we lack nothing. And to hold on that when you're, when, when the shepherd who is mighty is also your father, there, there is nothing you can lack. Protection, if you need soothing, if you need 
just things, day-to-day -day living, that's who we need to always be uh, uh, looking up to. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks be to God. And we're going to pray for you at the end of our time of testimonies together. But can I ask you to pray for us, to pray for the church community at this point? Father, we come into your presence with um, gratefulness for your faithfulness in our life. We thank you for, for this opportunity to share our experiences about you and your yes, faithfulness. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray that you continue to remind us that you are mighty and powerful and our Father, and that you are with us all the time, and you will never leave us. So we just praise you. We, um, we lift you up, and we glorify your name, and it is in your name that I pray. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Sister Christine. We're grateful for you. Yeah, go ahead and have a seat, and we'll uh, pray for you and others that share uh, today as well. And um, we're going to uh, just uh, continue this, this, uh, this trajectory and this um, example that our sister Christine has uh, given us today on, um, yeah, oh yeah, in case we need to pass it around. Um, and uh, we're going to just ask ourselves that question too. How have you help, held on to your hope in Jesus Christ? How has your journey with the Lord been in this past season? And how have you held on to hope? And if the Lord puts it in your heart, too, a word of encouragement to, to this community in this time also. So um, we'll go ahead and, um, and open it up for, for folks. Um, but I just absolutely love what our sister Christine shared with us to take time to get outside of ourselves and to meditate on the goodness of God, on the truth, on God's truth, God's reality, and then to cover all of our prayers with those words, Lord, may your will, not my will, be done. And I don't know about you, but when I heard our sister Christine sharing what happened this week, I thought to myself, wow, this is speaking to me directly. That was my week. I had thoughts, hopes, and certain search situations, circumstances that Sometimes God says no to. God always answers our prayers. His answers sometimes are wait, be patient. Yes, I will grant that. I will guide you in that. I will bless you in that. Or sometimes the answer is no. No, and I have something much greater for you something beyond what you could think of or even imagine. So how about for you? Let's go ahead and open. We have a couple of minutes before we close out in worship and we in prayer together. But how have you held on to your hope in Christ in this season? And we feel, feel free. It doesn't even have to be uh, long. It can be a phrase. It can be a line. It can be a couple sentences. Or, or a word of encouragement that you would just like to share with the community throughout the next couple of weeks. We'll have others have a special share and testimony as well. But we'll open it up here. If there's anyone that would like to share something um, at this time, um, we have an opportunity for that. So you can go ahead and raise your hand, and Eris has the, the mic, and she'll go ahead and pass it on to you. Um, any, any word of hope? How have you held on to your hope in the Lord? throughout this season in your journey with him. Yeah. Mandy. Um, well, I've held on in faith. Mm -hmm. In faith, absolutely. I feel like in all these uncertain times, just the faith and the hope that we have in Christ and um, just remembering everything that he's done um, in my life and, and, you know, the life of those. Um, that I know in my church family and um, just has made my faith grow um, in him and my trust and his faithfulness through all seasons, you know, because we've been through some pretty tough years and yeah. we're, we're still in it mm. um, differently, but 
but we're still there, but so is God. So um, just knowing that he's in control and that um, everything that we're going through is, is for a reason and only he knows what he knows what that is and he knows best. So no matter what happens around me, I like I was saying this morning, um, sometimes people don't know who they are right now. They don't know um, they don't know how to identify themselves. Um, sometimes people identify themselves with their past or their hopes, but um, I think it's really important to identify ourselves with our Heavenly Father Amen. And, and Christ because he doesn't fail. He is not weak. He is truth, and he can be trusted, and he is the only one that can get us through, through this life you know, through this journey, and, um, and so I'm just so thankful to God for that, because, you know, like, I'm glad that my identity is not in what I do, and who I am, or who I was, well, and who I am, which is is in Him, so that is what's going to remain, and, and I'm just grateful that I can say that. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Mandy, for that. Holding on to our hope through faith, faith in God's truth, in God's presence, in God's promises and power, faith that goes beyond sight. And we're excited because in the next couple of weeks, we'll hear a specialized, a special testimony from Mandy as well with a word of encouragement. So we'll be praying for her in that too. Um, We have time for one or two more. How have you held on to your hope in Jesus Christ in this season? Or a word, a phrase, a thought. Yes, uh, Sister Felicia. So God was bringing to my mind um, a time when I went through, um, it was years ago, but it's brought me, you know, really far. So it came to my mind, so I thought I should share. Um, There was a moment of, um, or I should say a season of loneliness, and um, I had illness, I had... um, uh, probably brokenness. Um, I don't know. It was excessive things. Probably financial needs. Um, God met every one of those. But during that time, I was home. I was. Uh, I think I was doing dishes. So I looked out a window, and there was a bird. Kept trying to land on this. Uh, it was like a really tall weed, and I was staring at it. And it did it over and over, and I, I thought. Why do you keep trying to land on that weed? You're so dumb. It doesn't hold you. And it did it over and over. And it, I just watched it try to sit there, and it just kept falling. And I thought, there's so many branches. There's so many stronger things that you can be. Sorry. Amen. Anyway, I only shared this with a friend. Um, God said, and you have done that, Felicia. You have tried to have anywhere from a, you know, a past uh, spouse, um, people in your life to hold you up. You have done exactly. He was like showing me that I was doing that exact thing that that bird was doing, landing on something that was not strong enough to hold them. That he was my strength, and he was there for me. Amen. And he was going to get me through everything that I was going through. Yes. And he did do that and um, brought beautiful people in my life that have supported me, have been there for me. Um, I think he just had me share because there might be loneliness, there might be despair, there might be um, where you lose your hope. You don't see your way. And then little by little he sends people your way, he sends, well, most of all, he's your strength, and he just wants you to rely on him in that season in your life, because he's going to get you through, and he's going to show you how, and it's going to be a little bit by little bit, step by step, but he's going to get you there, so I think he just let me see that bird in that moment and think how dumb they were just to show me that I was doing the exact same thing, mm. but I couldn't see it until he put it in my view like that. So um, 
Anyway, it's just an encouragement because throughout the years, he's got me through so much. And he continues, you know, through loss of my parents, through loss of a marriage, through loss of my health for a period of time. But I'm still here. I'm still going. And God is, God is the great one. He's, he's the one that we hold on to. He's our strength. Um, don't lean on things that, that he doesn't have for us to lean on, you know. He's our strength. He's our, um, he's our strong one. So... Hey Amen. Thank you. Hey Amen. Thank you for that, Sister Felicia. He's our strength. He's our hope. And God speaks to us even in mysterious ways and unexpected ways. We see that even in the scriptures. God uses creation. God uses birds <laughs> to, to be signs of his promises, of his covenant with us. God uses... Um, the elements. God uses all of creation to be able to do that. All of creation sings of his glory is actually what the Psalms tell us, that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including us, his people, and the precious creations that are in this world too, to remind us of God's goodness, faithfulness, and glory. So thank you so much for that, Sister Felicia. Amen. Well, we can be here all day. We can pass around the mic and we can hear about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. But right now we're going to take time to pray. Pray for whatever may be on your heart, on your mind, and whatever it is that you need to just be able to give to God today. In some of the testimonies that we heard today, we heard how that was something that God invited them into. To let go and to let God do something new. So let's go ahead and take a moment to pray, and we'll close with a song of worship. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you, and we give you praise, Lord, for your grace, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, that we're able to hear you at work in incredible ways, Lord, through the life of this community. Thank you that you speak to us, Lord, in ways that are mysterious, in ways that are unexpected, in ways that are fresh, Lord. Thank you for, Lord, for um, Christine, for just her journey with you, Lord, especially in this last year experiencing loss and grief to seeing new life and new hope in you, God. And even through what happened this week, Lord God, you reminded her of your goodness and faithfulness, which will, which will never leave her, Lord God. And, and Lord, we just thank you for that. And God, I just thank you also for the other shares, for our sister man, your sister Felicia, for those of us here, Lord, that didn't have an opportunity to share. But there's so much, Lord, that we just need to give up to you this morning, God. Today, Lord, we want to stop trying to do life on our own or life on our own terms. And instead, we want to turn our eyes on you. Instead of trying to fix ourselves and fix others, we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus today and in this week, Lord. We love you, Lord. God, we thank you that you are doing something new, something fresh, something incredible in the life of this community and in the life of each one of us, Lord, on this journey. Thank you, Lord that you can be trusted. You can be trusted to intercede and to battle on our behalf, Lord God. We can rest in you, Lord. We can sing these songs, Lord, to renew and restore our hope in you, Jesus. Our hope is in the Lord, not in anything or anyone else. Be lifted high, Lord. We pray all of this in the name above all names, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand and worship as we close out.